everyone, I'm Allie with Potomac Beads. Join me in creating this floral droplet earring, which can also be used as a pretty pendant or linked together in a bracelet design. Cheryl really knocked it out of the park here using our Potomac Crystal Droplets. Remember, if you do need any supplies, you can check out the links below the video in the description. Don't forget also to make sure to subscribe as well as give us a little thumbs up and give suggestions and some feedbacks on the video as well and tell Cheryl what a great job she did. As always, gather up those materials and we'll get ready to get started in making these fun, sparkly floral droplet earrings. So to begin, I have a size 10 needle and some 0.006 green thread to match my Olivine Chatons in the SS39 or about an 8 millimeter. And then I have droplets in a 6 by 10 Potomac Crystal in this beautiful cyan color. The ones that I'm wearing right here are in the Crystal AB and really shine as well. So you can see kind of the difference in the way that it looks based on the different colors. And even some variation along the C beads on the outer edge. I have some 11 ohm UPC beads here in the uh, check coating of the Crystal Magic Wine. And then some 15 O's hiding off to the side here in the Duracoat Galvanized Champagne. The first thing I've done is added a stop bead to the end of my thread, leaving about a two inch tail. And now I'm going to proceed to go into the smaller hole, the one closer to the point of the drop. And I'm going to add on six crystals, making sure that they're facing in the same direction. So you want to make sure as they drop down on the thread that they're all facing the exact same way. So you can see that they're going to hang down right like that. I'm going to continue to sew on two others till we have a total of six, which is going to lead to our little floral design here. So there's one more and then two. We're now going to make this into a round circle. To make it into the rounded circle that it needs to be, we're going to take our thread and needle back to that stop bead and we're going to sew through that first hole, the same hole that our thread's currently going through, of that droplet onto the second one, onto the third, and then I'm going to bring my thread and needle out. That pulls this nice and tight, but we don't want it so tight that it's going to bunch up together. So I'm not going to pull it super, super tight. If you do want to tie a knot, I would suggest using some 15 O's. I want to make sure that my little flower petals here, those little floral designs of the droplets, sit so that way they can sit next to one another exposed. The next droplet, which would be the fourth, I'm going to sew into that bottom hole and cross my needle along the back to step up to the top. This is such a sweet and simple design here that we're going to flip over now and then we're going to create a spacing going through that secondary hole here, adding in some 15 OC beads. We're going to add in four 15 O's and again I'm using the champagne color and connect and sew through all the top of the droplets. So four of our champagne go on and we're going to pick through and sew through the next upper hole there, see of the droplet, and so on through. The four seed beads are creating the base line of how far the droplets are going to sit apart from one another. Right through the back, and then once again, one, two, three, and four, and through the back of the design. So I'm going the whole way around here, creating that exterior row. And you can see as you create the row, how much nicer those lay down and sit. And they'll create a great base for us to do our seed beads on the top here and add our crystals in. So from here, I'm just going to move my stop bead and thread a little bit out of the way. Continue to add four as we go around the whole way, creating that outer edge connection. Once I have those four in them, you're going to sew back through that first one of your droplet beads as well as through the first four 15s that you added and out. So see how it comes around there? Pull your thread, give it a tight, nice pull there. Move that stop bead out of the way a little bit. And now we're going to connect to the exterior of the droplets. The exterior of the droplets are going to consist of five 11 OC beads. So here's where we're going to get that magic wine color in there. Give a nice little tight tug. 
at our one, two, three, four, and five. And then we're going to go above the droplet and sew right on through to the next group of four 15s. Again, five of our 15 O's go, or 11 O's go on. Go over the next droplet and sew through the next four of our 15s going through here. I'm going to continue to sew through and sew around here all of my droplets to that exterior hole, catching in and creating that little loop of seed beads on the outer edge, like the white ones or the darker purple here in Cheryl's design. Once you're done adding in the last of your 5110 seed beads, I want you to sew back through those first four 15s that you started out with. And you can see it's starting to lay nicer and starting to have that nice floral look. We're going to add some seed beads into the middle here to act as a bezel to hold in our beautiful olivine chaton. Prior to doing that though, while we're on the outside, I want to grab a wire guard or a wire protector, or if you're not sure exactly what you're connecting it to, a 6O seed bead, an 8O seed bead, or a soldered ring works really well also. I'm going to add my wire guard, sew up one hole of it and one side, sew down the other, flip your thread and needle over, and skip that center bead here, so we're skipping that center 11, and we're sewing in to beads 4 and 5. That wire guard then is just going to sit right on top of bead number 3 in that connection of four, collection of four, 5 beads. From here, I'm going to go back through my four outer beads of my 15s, and then I'm going to go through the four 11s, and I'm going to go through the four, or the five 11s, four 15s here. Just taking that stop bead kind of out of the way. Then I'm going to sew back into this droplet. When I sew back into the droplet, I'm once again going to sew into the angle. So I'm in the back hole of the droplet here. My needle is going into that top hole and crisscrossing down to the bottom hole on a diagonal. That once again brings my thread and needle in towards the interior of the floral design. From here we are going to add three seed beads that are going to loop over top of each of our beads here. So see how there's three beads here? They're sitting directly on top of our crystal. So coming out of our crystal you're going to add three more 11 O's. That same crystal that your thread is coming out of, you're going to sew into the other side. As soon as you're sewing into the other side, sew through to the next of your droplet as well. So my thread's coming out the left-hand side of this crystal droplet here. I'm going into the right-hand side and at the same time proceeding to my next droplet. You want to make sure those crystals sit to the top of the droplets and don't fall in between. Here it's going to be hard because you have that stop bead on, so just kind of pull that stop bead on out of the way, force them up towards the interior. Once again, coming out of the droplet, bottom hole, three beads go in. I go back through that same droplet, making sure those seed beads sit to the top, forcing those seed beads up, and we're going to force them up as we go back through it and sew through that whole center line. Go through the next droplet, and because we have six petals on our flower, we're going to do this a total of six times. I have two done. I'm going to go through the next four, adding the three seed beads on top, and then we're going to sew through our center line of our seed beads. Once you add in the final three seed beads and you have them sitting on top of the droplet there, I want you to take your thread and needle back through those three seed beads that you just added. Then you're going to proceed onto the next droplet. Sew through those three seed beads. Then you're going to proceed onto the next one. You want to make sure as soon as you're on top of the droplet here, sewing into all of the seed beads and creating this nice round bezel. You want to make sure that you don't miss any seed beads. It's very easy, especially if you did what I did and we didn't put any 15s in like Cheryl's design between our droplets. It's very easy for those seed beads to fall down to the side. You can see I've worked my thread the whole way around here, and as I do so and give a nice tight pull, it circles them up, making them have the perfect little bezel right there for my crystal to sit inside of. 
I'm going to sew through all of those seed beads one more time before taking some of my Loctite glue and gluing my chaton in place. So again, my thread and needle are going to go through all of those seed beads, that group of three from the center, tightening it up one more time, getting through all those seed beads, and then just taking some Loctite glue, adding a tiny bit to the back of the chaton and gluing it in place. I like the Loctite glue because it is very easy to control because of the dispenser bottle, but you can also use um, some of the E6000 if you want, and you can uh, do a bunch of different kind of glue trials, but I have found that the Loctite works really well. From here, prior to gluing my crystal right in the middle there, and it'll sit perfectly inside, you can see it really with the blue and the white there, as well as the crystal with the purple, I'm going to take this thread and needle first, prior to doing that, bring it down toward the back of the design, making sure I'm out one of those three groups of seed beads. And once I'm out through this three group of seed beads, I want to come back down into my droplet here. And once again, sewing down that center line around the back through the droplets till I can take that stop bead off, tie my knot, and easily finish up my design. If you want to, you can actually tie the knot in the interior here behind one of the droplets, making your threads match. However, by the time we go ahead and grab or glue in the crystal, you'll never see a tiny knot on the side. So I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna bring my thread and needle back around. If you wanna tighten up the design a little bit, you can take your thread and needle back around the outer edge of your seed beads. But again, by the time I glue in my chaton, that fit will be perfection. Go ahead, take off that stop bead, let it relax a little bit, tie these two thread ends together, and then you're gonna have just a little knot on the side. To glue the flower in place, you're just gonna take your glue, and I'll take this one off again here, and you're gonna put a tiny bit on the back of your chaton. From that tiny bit on the back of the chaton then, you're gonna push it down into those seed beads here. And then what I like to do is flip the piece over and drop just a tiny dab of glue into the interior there of the actual flower petals. And you can see that if you go around one more time, Cheryl said she went around again for some of these to make them seem a little closer and tighter. I like how this one kind of sits out a little bit, changing the design idea a little bit also here. She had some 11 O's mixed in with some 15. So you can play around with the different colors that are included in this beautiful design. All you need to do then is just stick them on your ear wires, onto your wire, goods, wire guards, and you are good to go to wear these beautiful, fun earrings. Thanks so much for watching these floral droplet earrings. Remember, if you do need any materials, go ahead and check out the description of the video. There's links that we put in there to be helpful to you to get a location right away to our website to gather some supplies. Remember also, if you haven't yet, hit that little subscribe button in the corner so you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads. I noticed a lot of you guys watch, and there's some of you that haven't subscribed yet, so don't miss out. As well as if you do want to, you can post your photos as well of your own floral drop droplet earrings in our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. Remember also to give a little feedback if you want to, saying how you changed up the design or how it inspired you, and give Cheryl a little thumbs up for her beautiful design. Thanks so much to Cheryl again for this design, and everyone have fun creating your floral droplet earrings.